This is Libby Van Cleve. I'm sitting with Ingram Marshall, and we're ready to start our interview. I really think a mus musical experience should be enveloping, and that real s the success of a piece could be perhaps uh, based on, on that, whether or not it, it succeeds in, in surrounding or enveloping or really involving a listener kind of in a, almost a, a narcotic way. Not, not to be zoned out or in a trance exactly, but you know, be really wrought up in it. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, if you can do that, I think you've done something. That's another thing, a beautiful quality of the music itself. I mean, the word beautiful is hard to define, but I think in some way it's, it's always in my the back of my mind when I'm writing. I, uh, I do go for the, some sense of the lovely or the beautiful or the gorgeous, mm -hmm. <laughs> the voluptuous, mm -hmm. you know, some sensuous, something that grabs, that's palpable mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, is not... Um, on the surface, disagreeable. I, I instinctively always went for that, but sometimes uh, a rational side of me said, no, that's not enough. You know, you've got to make some kind of structure here that's going to override that. And, and the structure is very important, but I came more to trust my instincts about going for the dark and the beautiful and be kind of endless. <laughs> I, I was realizing more and more the way I put my pieces together, it, it is very fragilely constructed, you know, it's like maybe as I'm going along, it's like when you're building something, I've forgotten to put an underpinning before it and make it really strong, but I'm going to keep going because I know I'm on the right track. So rather than go back and like fix it up, I just keep going and hope that the structure holds. Mm -hmm. You know, somehow miraculously it does. That's the way I compose. I sometimes think I'm not approaching it from the ground up. I'm starting up in the air. So maybe structurally, my music always is a little fragile. And that's a classic Ingram Marshall's approach, you know, I create a kind of a, a spine of, uh, of um, tape music, you know, the things I've created. And then the instrumental parts kind of go on top of it. This intuitive approach to form sometimes gets me into trouble, I have to admit, because uh, there are times when I have to go back after I've really finished a piece and kind of reconstruct it or do some editing or change things around. Uh, I rarely get a piece done and that, that's done. I'm, almost everything of mine is revised on some level after an, an initial performance or, you know, sorry, it's just the way I work. <laughs> Especially when I'm out walking, uh, walking generates a lot of, you know, your brain gets going. And, uh, I do get ideas while I'm walking. And, I mean, when I say walking, I mean exercise. And ideas come and they get tried out, you know. Usually enough that they don't amount to anything. But <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting, I do that more and more, I think, now. I get ideas when I'm out walking than I used to. I wonder why that is, I don't know. I'm a sentimental guy. My music's very sentimental, you know? I used to think that was kind of an insult to be told that. But I realized at some point that Sentimentality in music is a natural thing. 
sentiment as a value rather than as a pejorative. The sentiment is feeling, and feeling is what music is about. 